I could probably have picked a, a less noisy place to shoot this, but then you wouldn't have been able to see all these cool buses and cars that are here. Hey guys, Jonas here. I am in London today, actually. I'm shooting for a TV series. And this is the green screen, the studio where I have been shooting. Uh, this is where I was sitting. And today I want to talk about the basics of white balancing. To understand this, we first have to understand the concept of color temperature. Basically, every light source that we have has a temperature and is measured in a Kelvin scale. This is what the general scale looks like. The color temperature is sort of the hue of the light. And you can see here where the hues of most common light sources generally are. The color temperature greatly affects our photographs and video. A shoot in direct sunlight is going to have a dramatically different color temperature to fluorescent lights in a lab or sports facility, so our cameras have ways to compensate for it. This is our white balance. We kind of have to tell the camera what white or gray looks like under a certain light. On most cameras, there are preset settings to compensate for the color temperature of a typical light source. This is what they look like on most cameras. And then, of course, we have the auto option. A lot of times, we kind of tend to set the camera to automatic white balance, and that could work a lot of times in places like this with you know good sunlight it usually works really well but in other places it could really mess up your shot believe it or not but this is what happened when my white balance was set to auto when filming in a swimming pool recently also with some cameras it might be more difficult to change the white balance i took a sequence of still images with a gopro underwater and these two shots were taken with two seconds in between a cloud went past and it changed the light just a little and this was the result could just be good to keep in mind when you're shooting in places where you know the light source or light conditions may change during your shoots for example really important when you're doing a time lapse so basically we have four different options the first one like we just talked about is to keep the white balance in auto which works Works really well in many cases but not always and not for all cameras. The second is to use one of the white balance presets. Just remember that these are estimates and what the white balance normally is like under a typical light source. And you always have to remember to change the setting if you move to an area with a new main light source. So I want to show you what happens if we have the white balance set to sun, which is what we have right now, and daylight, and take the camera to fluorescent lights instead. Check this out. On the fluorescent light, the sun preset looks way too yellow. This is what it looks like with the fluorescent preset. But if we take it outside to daylight, it's way too blue. The third option is to manually dial in the white balance you think looks good. On a DSLR and most cameras, you do this by choosing the preset white balance option K and just scroll the numbers. And the fourth option is to use a white balance gray card. This allows your camera to kind of Check what the light source reflected back from the gray card is and then make an estimate from that reflected light. I always use this with my Sony a7S for example. In my white balance presets I have an option called set, which basically means setting the white balance. I aim at the gray card and hit the button again and that's it. I hope that explains the basics of things a little bit. And I don't even have time to take any test shots right here because I gotta rush off to the airport. Holy crap, where the hell am I? Thank you